Hey guys, welcome to the next video. For today's video, we are going to be looking at uh, inverter systems. Basically, what is recommended and what isn't. A few recommended options. So, stay tuned as we build a DIY system. Uh, like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy. So, I've recently built a do it yourself DIY inverter system made up of uh, 205 amp hour batteries, deep cycle batteries with an inverter. Uh, we're going to look at building one. Basically living in South Africa, uh, we tend to have what they call rolling blackouts. We call it load shedding. So we're going to be building a system in order to give us the ability to game uh, while there's no power. So let's have a look at what, what you need, what you need to look at. Uh, we're going to go through some recommended options. So for today's video, we're actually going to build a system. Um, I actually bought it in the beginning of the year and I've been testing it ever since and reconnected it and decided, you know what, we might as well while we're reconnecting it, put together a video for it. Okay, so firstly, many questions asked, how, how big of a system do you actually need to run your PC? So a recommended way to gauge is to basically, if you're running a console and TV, uh, check the wattage, max power draw on your console and on your TV. Also, obviously, you'd probably want to run a router or something to that effect. So check the power draw on that as well. When it comes to PCs, it starts to get a little bit tricky when you start to try and work out what you actually need. Because in many cases, if you're running a thousand watt power supply, you're not using a thousand watts. On average, I mean, I'm running a 3070 and a Ryzen 9. 5900 and my PC at full tilt pulls about a 500 watts and I've got a 850 watt power supply. So if you're looking for something budget, something cheap, maybe have a look at uh, something like a 144 watt inverter system. Uh, you can buy them off the shelf at places like uh, GWiz. You can buy the standalone unit. So 2400 VA inverter, that type of thing. Um, these type of systems usually run off two batteries. Okay, so what's the difference between a UPS and an inverter? A UPS, for most installations, a UPS will only allow you a short period of time in order to shut down your PC. So if load shedding hits and you're looking at two hours of, of, of downtime, UPS will give you about 15 minutes. And it's not exactly 15 minutes, depending on how much power you're pulling from it. Most most often it's a systems come with like a 7.5 amp hour battery usually two of them sometimes four of them uh, some of them run at 12 volts some of them run at 24 volts depending on how they've connected up the batteries inside the inverter system but it gives you about 15 minutes and usually you can tell on uh, on the site that you're buying it for or on the website manufacturer's website uh, how much time it will give you uh, so the most most recommended thing to go for is an inverter system. Inverter system has the ability to change out batteries, put in better quality batteries depending on the type of inverter system you're looking at, and will can give you four hours quite easily. Um, I haven't pushed mine to the limits just as, as yet because of the way in, in which the system's configured. So basically for today's video, we're gonna be looking at um, this, something similar to this. So this is one that I picked up at the beginning of the year. It's a 3000 VA, 3000 watt pure sine wave. Uh, it's generally recommended that you go for a, a pure sine wave system. Um, usually it's been better for electronics. So it's, it's better for electronics if you're running pure sine wave system. So it's recommended, but people have gotten away with running uh, modified sine wave um, inverters and stuff. And it's been fun as far as I can gather. Pure sine wave is just the, the type of power. So basically pure sine wave is very similar to what comes out of the wall is pure sine wave so one of the best ones to go for um, pure sine wave inverts are more expensive than modified sine wave inverters so bear that in mind and usually i don't know if it's because of the new electronics nowadays they're able to handle modified sine wave but again it's, it's recommended that you look at a pure sine wave now you can go for something as small as a 144 watt depending on your system but the main difference would be there's a hybrid system from Leroy Merlin. The main difference between inverts and what's in it would be the batteries. With batteries, you get a 100 amp hour battery and that will give you your four hours fairly easily depending on what you're running on it. Obviously, these type of systems aren't generally meant to run kettles and that type of thing. So bear that in mind. But for electronics and running games, you should be all right with that. Um, in terms of calculating what your usage is and what you actually need, they recommend an 80%. So for interest sake, if your PC is running a 650 
watt power supply and it's not a, entirely a 650 watt you can work it out differently um, because your piece will actually pull less power than that in most cases some cases it'll pull 600 watts that type of thing but even that it won't pull 600 watts uh, your PC will generally pull lower than that so when you're speaking out a power supply for your PC you should basically allow for, for instance sake if your PC pulls 500 watts you should allow 650 watts for the power supply okay so you can go for something like this i mean these are pretty cheap difference between the two is a modified sine wave c so you can see the difference between the two this would be a i'm assuming a pure sine wave and this would be a modified sine wave so if you can try and go for the more expensive one the pure sine wave not the more expensive one it doesn't matter about the price try go for the pure sine wave okay so we're gonna have a look at the two differences between this is 144 watts so to give you a an example on on my system i'm running uh, three screens my complete pc with a 3070 and a, a ryzen 9 5900x my pc doesn't pull anything over 550 watts where it starts becoming tricky with it, with trying to pick a system is usually something called power factor so if you've got a good quality power supply then the power that it uses will be more efficient in most cases so if you go for a cheap power supply your power supply generally pulls more than what your system's actually pulling because it's not as efficient as the newer ones it does get a lot more technical than that but this is just a <laughs> more of an overview than anything else so just bear that in mind um so basically if you had a for example if you had the same system um same hardware except for the, the power supply and you have to put two different power supplies into the system so you build one and you put a cheap power supply into the system and you test the wattage in many cases it will pull more watts than an expensive power supply because the expensive power supply is generally more efficient than the cheaper power supplies now there's a thing called power factor power factor correction um which for interest sake if you, you can have a look at the difference between um the va versus the watts uh, some of the ones that have good power factor correction will be almost on par so it's not entirely on par what's used versus what's what's the name but they generally handle this a lot better and better types of systems so you can just pick up one of these gee whiz uh, for batteries uh, again it's it's recommended that you go for uh, deep cycle ba batteries or lithium batteries lithium ion batteries but they start becoming pricey uh, you can go for the cheaper batteries but bear in mind so let's have a look at batteries okay so you get different types of batteries that you can use for your system this can be used but it's not entirely a recommended battery to you to be used for inverts and they do state it though okay so when picking out your batteries you get different types you get uh, high cycle batteries which is this type of thing which is a marine style battery that can crank start so crank start means your for instance sake like your car when you turn the key it sends a large it sends a large surge of power and then able to start your car the problem with these types of batteries is for interest sake similar to a car when you start your car the power goes through starts the car and then the alternator kicks in and the alternator charges the battery so these are able to last for five years in that use case so it's very similar to what you use there it can last for five years but when it comes to uh, battery backup systems they do become a problem so it can be used I actually originally i bought a set of these i didn't buy from them i got it for like a thousand three hundred rand and they, they lasted me six to eight months i think it was about seven months they actually lasted and one of the things you got to keep an eye out for when buying batteries is the yeah is the amount of cycles that the batteries can actually do a cycle on a battery is the use of the battery so for interest sake a standard battery runs at 12 volts they can push up to 12.8 volts but let, let's work on 12 volts once the battery gets down to 11 volts uh, the battery's flat cycles would be it being used so to 50 percent so 11.5 volts that's 50 percent usage once they get to a certain point that's the cycle then you charge that up again and then this will give you 200 now 200 cycles is, is 200 cycles is a fair amount but bear in mind that if for interest sake in south africa we get load shedded three times in a day or we used to uh, at the moment it seems to be a little better we were looking at load shedding once a day once a day for two hours so if you had to look at it previously where it's three times a day you're looking at using this battery of 200 cycles three times a day how many 
days will it actually get you out of a battery and you can see there's a rough idea of 150 to 200 usually this is DOD so from fully charged till the battery's dead but high cycle batteries shouldn't you shouldn't run them dead so bear that in mind and it says yeah design life five years more than 260 cycles at 80 percent discharge so the the lower you run the batteries the less amount of time it'll actually last so if this is 150 to 200 but that's also how much power you're putting from the battery now on some inverters they'll give you a screen and it'll show you if you have a look here it's firstly it's recommended that you don't go lower than it's got bars here so bars are percentage of use when a battery is drained it doesn't mean it's got no power it means it doesn't have enough power in order to put out so you've got 25 percent if you go down two bars it'll be 50 percent and you've got 75 percent other way around so 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent and 100 percent usually if you want a system it's best to design it around um, only using one bar so if you're running a system for two hours whatever you're pulling from the system try not to especially if you're running uh, also deep cycle batteries as well uh, high cycle batteries or deep cycle batteries uh, go down one bar preferably in two hours then it's fine uh, when it comes to the larger systems like this they're able to charge a lot faster usually uh, this specific one can do 25 amp charging which means it'll charge quicker and it's purposefully built for slightly larger systems whereas the smaller ones will take longer to charge uh, it should tell us what amperage it charges at one one SA plug they do have complete systems um, the only reason why I opted to build it myself is because it worked out cheaper so for interest sake basically for the price of yeah they're running cheap batteries in here for the price of this of this system for 9595 I was able to build a three kilowatt system and for about two thousand two and a half thousand rand more I was able to build a system that um, runs 200 amp amps per hour instead of 100 amps per hour okay so yeah um, check on prices it the LE stuff Charlie kit from macro they do sell them in a few different places you can have a look at Leroy Merlin or you can just do buy the pieces and build it yourself uh, in many cases it might be better to build it yourself so you can go for something like this um, this is the intelligent charging one so there we go there you've got your load so on the display on this type of unit you've got your input you've got your output pretty straightforward online there's your pure sine wave this one is a modified sine wave so you can go for something like this, but just bear in mind that it's not entirely recommended. Nowadays, the TVs are more capable of handling modified sine wave, but again, it's still not, not recommended. Your battery, so you've got 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Uh, usually, I try and build the system so that we only go down 25% um, to, give you a, to give you a better example. See, so cycle life versus a depth of dip, of discharge DOD you'll often see that on the batteries uh, is how depth of discharge is how deep you discharge the battery so if you discharge it by 25% so there's still 80% on you'll get more life out of your battery um, this is a gel battery uh, they are pretty expensive um, usually the high cycles are cheap are cheaper so you but I've been able to pick them up for 1,003. Um, the deep cycle batteries, uh, I picked up two deep cycle batteries for 1,800. These are usually like 3,000 Rand each uh, for my system, uh, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, you'd need two of them. My system runs at 24 volts, but you can see the, the life. This is a, a, a nice graph to look at. You can see the depth of, dis of discharge which is this here, cycle life versus depth of discharge. On this specific battery, you can get, if you only discharge it by 30%, so 100% would be draining the battery. 50% would be using half of the, the battery's capability. So when you look at the display, so you'd be using half of it. So yeah, so this, these are your life cycles. This is your percent capacity. So basically you can get 2000 hours. You can get 2000 discharges out of this battery. 
if you're only using it down to 30%. So if you're building a system, try and build a system that will only use 25%, and that's based on the batteries. If your inverter is a 1440 watt, it just means that that's the max capability that the, that the inverter can put out. But how long it's going to last is all dependent on batteries, size of batteries, and amp power. If you want to extend, you can add additional batteries. Uh, there is a recommendation that you don't mix the types of batteries. There is also a recommendation that you don't mix, mix different ages of batteries. But uh, it does work if you do, it's just in one line don't, yeah, it starts getting a bit finicky, so just bear that in mind. And not only that, if you've ever seen the video where they start welding with uh, with 12 volt car batteries, yeah, just tread cautiously when you're dealing with batteries. Okay, so you can buy complete systems, again, I mean, when you're paying this much money for a inverter system, or a UPS system, you might as well just start building your own thing. You can, from them, you can also buy the leads in order to connect them up straight onto the batteries, uh, it is recommended that you fuse them, that you put fuses on the batteries, the positive terminal straight to the inverter, uh, and some complete kits will come with a breaker built into it, a circuit breaker, uh, in order to switch off power going in and going out, if it does trip that type of thing. So, thanks very much for watching, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you in the next video. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments, and like, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.